So today we are look into the last bit of the gravity and we will look into two things. The zero gravity experience. Zero gravity experience and energy in gravitational field. might be related to it without using both words weightlessness. So, but what do we feel? What do we feel as our weight? What do we feel? No, we have just normal reaction. We have we feel normal reaction. Because when you are, well, remember questions with the lift accelerating up or down. Does weight does uh force with which earth attract you changes? No. But if lift accelerates up, you feel heavy. Have you become heavy? No. What's changing? Normal. normal reaction. So what we feel is normal reaction. So there are two ways, two possible ways not feel gravity. What will be those two ways? Space. In space where there will be no gravity. There will be no gravity. So if you are uh, far away from a object and uh, there is gravity pretty much uh, close, no, there is no such place because gravity going to infinite, uh, infinitely far, but very little gravity. Or another thing when there will be no gravity acting on you, what are the possible cases? If the actual will be forced gravity on you equals effectively zero. Yes? Maybe when you're traveling like the yeah. same gravity up, like the same acceleration upwards. When you are between two objects, between always between two objects will be the point where force attraction to one will be equal force of the attraction to other. You had a few questions on that. Find at which point between like Earth and the sun, there will be zero resultant gravitational field zero. But there is another thing when normal reaction equals zero. So, for example, if you go in, like over the bridge with the circular motion, we were discussing with the car losing contact. And if you're moving fast enough, and becomes zero. And you will feel like there is no gravity. Or if you are in a free fall. When you are in a free fall, there is no reaction, no normal reaction. And let's consider the next example. If I have, let's say, this book that you need to use, checkpoints, and I have Actually, on the, on the compass, there are chapters with the solutions and other the lesson plans that says which questions to do. If I have, I put marker on the book. There is some normal reaction acting on it. And let's say, for simplicity's sake, that uh, let's take G equal 10 and mass of this mark as uh, 100 grams. What will be normal reaction? It's mass 100 grams. Take G equals 10. What is the normal reaction now? One Newton. It's equal mg. One Newton. What will be normal if I will drop this book? 
while it will be in the air, while it will be flying, what will be the normal reaction? Zero. Zero, yes. So normal reaction, if you are in a free fall, you normal reaction will be zero. That, if you've seen, and you've probably every one of you seen the videos from the space station orbiting around the Earth, the uh, astronauts, they were floating. Why they are floating? Are there is no gravity acting on them? There is a gravity. If there will be no gravity, how they will move in a circle around? They will just go straight. But they are in a free fall, together with the space station. They are constantly in the free fall. Why they are not never actually falling on the Earth? Because Earth is actually not flat. As some people still think <laughs> of it. It's, still, it's round. And they yeah, they fall in. They fall in, but Earth curling away. They keep falling, they keep Not falling, they keep falling. Not perfect circle. But uh, that's what's happening. They're constantly falling on the Earth. But because Earth curve, they don't never fall. And that's why they don't feel any normal reaction, because they are in a free fall. Make sense? Yeah. Now, energy in the gravitational field. And when we were before looking on the graph of the force against distance, F against, let's say, X, and we have something like this. And how much, how we could find the work done by the force? Area. Area under the graph. Yes. And the same thing in the gravitational. If you sketch the graph of the gravitational field against distance from such a planet, what kind of graph it will be? What well, the formula connecting f and distance? f equal, equal g m m over r squared. What shape and what mathematical relationship with it? Trunkus. Trunkus. It is trunkus. So we have this thing. That what will be, that what will be the graph force against distance because it is inverse square law. So mathematically it's trunkus. Yes? What's x on the other graph? Distance. That was for any, like force any distance, not just with the gravity. If I, for example, uh, moving this distance x up or to the left or to the right, whatever, whatever displacement is, that was x. This is the distance from the center of the planet. So we have this graph. And if object move from the let's say distance R1 to distance R2 and let's say it's going up. So we, we lift and we moving satellite to the higher orbit. How much work we need to do? How much how much will be the gain in the gravitational potential energy? Area. The, this area. Area under the now, how we can find this area? Now, if calculus will be in the school physics curriculum, then we will have just find antiderivative of this from R1 to R2 and... What was the, like, what was the area under the graphic? It is, will be walk. If we lift in from distance R1, we want to lift satellite to R2, that will be gain in the gravitational potential energy, or how much work we need to do to lift. How you find the actual area, because you're not doing any differentiation of this form. But there are uh, two ways. In the most of the cases, the graph that we've given you will have squares. 
it will have a squares. It will have a squares. Let's say something like this. It has squares, and you need to find area of one square. Count squares. Of course, it will be always approximate because how many squares are now? under this graph of from here let's say to here we have one two three four now uh, this and this probably will be five and a quarter something like that you can just say like around five five will not be uh, no always on the exam in the such question there is always a range of the acceptable number of squares that you count and uh, for example, here definitely will be like 5 to 6. Anything between 5 and 6 will be accepted. Because you cannot calculate exactly the number of squares. Then you calculate area of one square and you find the total area. Yes? So we can't use anti We can't use anti differentiation. I will not recommend it. Now, there are some cases when the graph, if you open your booklet, if you open your booklet on the page to give you a, for example, page 145, open booklet on the page 145. You, you can see the graph and it's possible to count the squares under this graph, 144. But, 145. Sorry, 146. 146. But if we look on the graph, on the page 144. Please have a look on the graph on the page 144. In such case, nobody will, that will give you an idea when there are small squares and you will not be expected to count those squares. If the squares are, squares are big, like in the previous example. So, what shape, if you look on this, it will be trapezium. So you will need to find area of the trapezium. Yes? What if it's a trunk of stuff? If it's curved, nearly curved like this, you count number of the squares. If there are small squares and the line is close to straight, in some questions you will have that, that tells you that you need to use formula for area of the trapezium. Or another example, if you look on the page 137, page 137, page 137, if you look on this graph, I don't think that anybody will expect that you count those squares. But this line is quite approximately straight line, so we can use area of the two pieces. Now, and we will actually do, I, I will say, probably this question, this question from 2004 exam, question 3, probably the hardest, I will say, ever question on the exam. Can you see how many percent of students go to try? One. One percent. Which so next to question three. Page 137. 137. There's only one question. There's only one percent of students manage to do this question. Then let's do this question. There are few things in this. It's, it's worth five marks for a reason. It's not just error. Wait, so that means only one percent of people got all five marks? Yes. So people got some like you know, one, two, yeah, yeah. marks, but five marks got only one percent. So let's have a look on this graph. I will approximately uh, 
Egypt. So we have uh, what is important, what is on the vertical axis? Not force, but gravitational field strength. Gravitational field. So it's G. So if when you find area, this is G against height. When we find area, will it tell us when we have G against height? If we found the area, will it give us work done or energy? No. What we will need to do to find the area? Multiply. To find the uh, energy? Multiply by mass. Multiply by mass. Multiply by mass. Because what is G? What is the, why it's Newton per kilogram? What is the sense of the gravitational field strength? What it tells you? Force. Acting on mass. One, kilogram. one kilogram, force acting on one kilogram mass. So if there are 100 kilograms, you need to multiply by 100. So we have 400 kilogram aircraft, spacecraft, spacecraft, 400 kilogram spacecraft uh, from rest at the surface of Earth. Uh, <coughs> And you see in the graph it's height above Earth's surface. Height above Earth's surface. So it starts from here and to stand even there. And to the, uh, need to put it into the stable circular orbit of the height 1.7 times 10 in the power of 6 meters. If you look 10, uh, where will be 1.7? Uh, 1.7 on this graph and what will be the gravitational field strength uh, look from the graph what will be G at that height 6.5 yes I think about 6 point uh, oh, yeah. Six point uh, six point four. Mm. So what? Six point three. Okay, this is here. The line going. It's approximately a straight line, and this is six. So let's find how much work we need to do just to leave this uh, spacecraft. So just use the straight line. Uh, we can consider it as a straight line. You cannot count squares, so we you have to use. Hmm? You can take a bunch of points. Yeah, so that kind of is yeah, we can just take one big trapezium. Yeah, but yeah, the most accurate if you will most accurate if you do anti differentiation. If you yeah. anti -der if you do anti derivative G if you do G M over R squared D R, which is pretty simple. Which is pretty simple because G M is a constant, I negative two when we anti derive, so we will get G m times r in negative 1 and you have minus so it is effectively will be equal negative g m on r from, from r1 to r2 from r1 to r2 this will be the best way but it is not in the school curriculum because there is there is the pro the problem is that uh, I will say majority of or most of of the people marking exam they don't teach methods of specialists. It's not many people who teach specialists yeah. and methods and, and physics. 
So for them, not all of them will understand. Not all of them will understand. So to be safe, don't use anti-decree. Use what is expected. That's what I'm saying. Use estimated trapezium. So what will be the area of this trapezium? What will be the area of this trapezium? Area of this trapezium. So we have this is 6.3. 6.3. Yeah, if you look at one, oh, yeah. this is 6.3. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have oh, yeah. so, no. uh, What is so uh, we have This is a height above the Earth's surface. So we have 1.7. 1.7. So do we take 50 times 10 to the 6 or you just take 1.7? No, no, times 10 to the power of 6, of course. 1. Uh, you have to multiply the 3 by 5. So 1.7, one, one this is the height, and uh, we have 10 plus, so we have 10 plus 6.3 over 2 times 1.7 times 10 to the power of 6. That will be how much work needed to lift it from the surface of the earth. Uh, and that is area, area. And to find what we do area times mass. Area times mass, which is 400. Yeah, can you please help? Yes. Why did we use 10 plus 6.3? The area of the formula for area of the trapezium, we have trapezium on the side. When we have trapezium, we have A. B and this is the height and area is A plus B on 2 times height. This is our A, this is our B, this is our height. Oh, it's a bezium on the side. So calculate, tell me what will be how much work needed. 5.542 times 10. What was the area? 5.2 times? No, 5.542. 5 times? Times 10 to the 9. 10 to the 9 joules. Now what will happen if we use that much huge amount of energy and we lifted this spacecraft to that height? What will happen? We lift it. It will fall down. It will fall down. If you lift something in the gravitational field, you just lift it and leave it. It falls down. What we need to do to put it down? We need to give it speed. We need to give it kinetic energy. We need to kick it so it will start rotating. Now, how much kinetic energy we need to give it? How much kinetic energy we need to five give? 5.5 times 10 to the 9. No. Nine this nine is, this is how much energy we need just to lift it to this height. Kinetic energy is m v squared on 2. What the formula for v squared? What the formula for v squared? V squared will be equal square root of g r. V squared will be equal g r. How we can get it? V equal to uh, but G at that height. G yeah. this G. This G. Hmm? Okay, which formula? Capital G M over R. So V equal V squared. G V squared equal G M over R. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, <coughs> 
we know that we have uh, what g equal? What the formula for g? Any square. Uh -huh. hmm? What the formula for g? G, g, g m over r squared. If you substitute here g m over r, you can see that g m over r. So this equal g m over r and then divided by r. See? So we have v squared equal v squared equal g, capital G universal gravitational constant times mass of the Earth in this case divided by r. But we have the g equal g m over r squared. So this if we divide this, if we multiply this by r, we will get g. We comb I'm combining these two formulas. So we combine these two formulas. This and this. From here, from this formula, what gm over r equal? From this formula, what gm over r equal? Gia. From here, G M over one R. If we move one R to the left, so it will be G R. So we can use V squared equal G on top. So V equal square root of six point three. We know G at that point from the graph times. 1 point, now, this is a bit tricky thing. What is R? Oh, this is that. that is it 1 point? Hmm? That's the right. yes. We need plus to plus add plus radius plus. of Earth because this is a high above the Earth. The radius of the orbit will be this plus radius of the Earth. Because we have, this is the Earth, and this is where it is. And we have this height. So radius of the orbit, we need add radius of the Earth. So it will be 6.3 times 1.7. We actually don't need V, we need V squared. Because in the kinetic energy, we have V squared, so we don't need square root. V squared equals 6.3 times 1.7 plus radius of Earth uh, given to you in the formula sheet. It's 6.4 times 10 and the power of 6 and then mv squared on 2 so kinetic energy equal 400 mass times v squared times 6.3 1.7 plus 6.4 radius of earth this is radius of earth 6.4 times 10 and the power of 6 divided by 2 so we need to add that much kinetic energy. And total energy that we need to give this 5.5 times 10 to the power of 9 plus what you will get here. And do calculation and tell me what will be the total answer. One, it's 1 times 10 to the 10. This is 1 times 10 to the power of 10? Yeah. So, plus 1 times 10 to the power of 10. What will be the, so, what will be the total amount of work done? What will be the total? Do you need calculator to do this? Come on. 1.55 times 10 to the 10. Yes. Well done, Benji. 1.55 times 10 to the power of 10 joules. Acceptable answer was between anything between 1.5 and 1.6. That was accepted. It's a hard question. And many people, uh, quite a few people did calculate the area. But it will not put it into the orbit. We also need to give it kinetic energy. Yes. How much velocity do you have just for the area? Huh? 
Marked area. Uh, no, I was not marked uh, in 2004. So I'm not sure how it was, but I will I will assume that it will be two marks for calculating. That. That's but that's my assumption. Makes sense how to deal with the energy in the gravitational field. Yes. Um, are we finding V at the surface of the Earth? Because uh, you said that. Uh, no, no. V, it is at V and G at a certain height, at some specific height. Because well, you said because um, you needed the kinetic energy for the submarine, right? It's from moving over there. We lifted it. We lifted it to the required height. But if we leave, leave it there, it falls. So when we lift, we need also give it kinetic energy to fly. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Then that's. All of the theory of the area of study one. Like, subscribe, and donate to help fight Russian fascists, support Ukraine and Israel.